Hey everyone, welcome back. So behind me is Battersea Power Station, or what used to be Battersea Power Station. It's now something completely different. In fact, if you look at that second chimney, that is also an attraction now. I'm about to visit Europe's new top shopping destination. So obviously I'm not a big fan of shopping myself, but I know someone who is. That's me. Because I thought I can't come to one of Europe's new biggest shopping destinations without bringing Gabby. This whole area has been transformed. Battersea wasn't the best area back in the day. This whole project cost over nine billion. Should we go and check it out? Let's check it out, I can't wait. So the entrance we're taking, well, I've kind of got to figure out how I get over there. This is Chelsea Bridge. Gabby's never been to Chelsea before. We just walked through Chelsea. What did you think? I thought it was really beautiful. I can't believe I've been the streets there actually. So that tower there, you could see something's popped out of it. And I thought I was seeing things at first, but I've decided to book. I'll tell you how much that's going to be later. It might surprise you actually. So we need to head down there. So I thought it'd be a nice route in as we walk by the Thames. And here's an interesting fact. Battersea Power Station used to keep all these houses or what used to be houses and apartments over the other side of the bridge warm back in the 80s. It was Prince Philip's least favorite place and the cats for some odd reason used to love the power station. So all this accommodation is new. See the top of the chimney just poking out just there. This is when it actually opened on the 14th of October place to shop, live and eat. Would you live here? Yeah, I like it actually. If I was to live anywhere in London, it'd be somewhere like this. So there's loads of restaurants, cafes along here. All this area has been done. It looks really pretty actually, doesn't it? With the London skyline in the background. Now the point of filming this is in December. So they're getting ready for Christmas. So you'll see lots of Christmas decorations and stuff. But this area used to be pretty much like a bit of a wasteland. It seems so striking as you walk up to it, doesn't it? Some huge Christmas ball balls. So there's the power station suites that are for sale, um, costing probably around a few hundred thousand, maybe up to a million for a penthouse. Here I am, the power station, and here is the map. This is so weird to see this, that you are here, the entrance to the power station. Obviously, we're going to go and see what it looks like inside because it looks pretty special. And it's nice that they've got some restaurants and other things going on outside. And because it's Christmas, they have an ice skating rink and a little pop-up bar. Look, that's real. This ice skating rink is pretty big actually. Look at that with the tree in the middle. That is absolutely amazing. In the shadow of the power station. Wow. I've made a reservation to go into lift 109, which is that thing there where you actually go up into one of the old, I guess, cooling towers, steam towers. So before we actually head into Battersea power station itself, I'm going to head up there. So it'll be interesting to see when Christmas finishes what they'll have here afterwards. But there's a little bit of a, a vintage fun fair going on and a little mini big wheel as well. Okay, let's head in. The first thing that is quite interesting is they don't have any signage on the front whatsoever. Yeah, I know. And what looks like a royal balcony at the top. You would not think this is going to have anything to do with shopping as you approach it, would you? No. Can we go for the main doors, like the big centre doors? Because everyone's just going around the edges at the moment. Be a bit more of a grand uh, entrance if we can. Will it open for us? Or are these not open? Yeah. No. <laughs> so have to go. Wow. I mean, look at that. A lot of the brickwork, as you can see over there, is exposed, but amazing. Wow. Again, it doesn't feel like a shopping centre, but you can see the shops. They're all embedded in the side almost. I was going to say for a second, is there carpet? Yeah. There isn't carpet. See all the original brickwork going up. And I think what probably was stairs back in the day, and where the original windows were, they've replaced with obviously new windows. So we're going to go and have a look around because there's some very interesting places to go and check out, like Turbine Hall B and Turbine Hall A and also see what shops are in here. Before we do any of that, it's time to go up here. 
That's where I'm going. So that's what it looks like coming out of the top of the tower. I thought I was on level one. This does say level one. I'm just confused to where I go. Oh, hang on a second. There's a sign right there. The fully restored Northwest chimney houses a lift that takes you up to 109 meters above London. Look at that, all the old girders and pulleys that used to be here from the old power station. This is absolutely incredible. Hard to believe this has only been open now for just two months. Okay, let's talk about price. If you book ahead, it costs you 15 pounds. If you want to book on the day and you're lazy like me and you didn't realize that the lift was here, it will cost you 23 pounds. So I advise booking ahead. So you go through a little bit of history about Battersea Power Station. And everyone's waiting. I've got to go in when that says group two. So that's group one. Hard to believe what used to be in this very hall, that massive turbine. Did you know it's also been used for loads of different movies and TV shows when it was left disused? Until what it looks like now. It's talking about the cats that made the power station their home. I mean, I know it's just a lift, but it's been turned into a bit of a tourist attraction where you can get your photo taken. So the countdown has begun until I'm heading up. Five minutes and 32 seconds. Tension is mounting. I was actually taking photos of the countdown. I believe this door will open. It should do. There it does. So I take it these are the lifts. One of these is the lift. So you're all about to go through a journey showing you how power is created in a power station. So you're aware this wall over here, this wall behind you, and this wall over here are all interactive. So feel free to get nice and close to them, move around, and the walls will react to you. But apart from that, enjoy the show. actually have to press it ourselves. <laughs> Bye. I mean, there's only one floor, really. Uh, above you here, you'll be able to see the northwest chimney. Um, so you have to take photos. Quite a good opportunity for me to do so. Up to the boarding level, there's 36 steps. Uh, you've got a couple of minutes till the lift comes down, so there's no rush to get to the top of the step. <coughs> So obviously it's not a lift all the way up. You've got to take the steps. So we've walked up some steps. Now we wait for the, the lift. How cool is that? Hello everybody. Would you like to come into me please guys? Just head all the way into the lift for you please. Wow. That's where we're going. Spaceship. Hello, everybody. My name is Fred. I've been doing this operation for today. This is 
so weird. point out what you can see in front of you. It's amazing to think that we're actually in the chimney right now. An iconic chimney as well. London skyline over there, you can see the Docklands in the distance, the Tower of London, the Shard over there, and of course the River Thames, which looks beautiful today. So we are 109 meters in the air which is pretty much the same height as the London Eye. But if you think the logistics that they had to do to just put this lift in this tower and how much it cost. So from the top here, you can actually see down into the power station and the shopping center and how they've literally transformed it. There's like gardens down there. What looks like some VIP areas going along the top. Can you see that? And the two other chimneys. And now we're about to go down. That's it. So here you come out and you scan your QR code of your ticket. If you screw it up, it won't work. <laughs> oh well, it was an awful photo anyway. So you can get mugs, postcards, pencils, diaries. Well, for £15, if you book in advance or if you pay on the day, it's a little bit more expensive. I thought that was a great experience. You get a really different perspective of the London skyline from this side of the Thames. But the fact that you're actually in a piece of history, who would have thought that you could actually go up into one of the old chimneys at Battersea Power Station? That was an amazing experience. So we're starting from the lower ground floor and we're going to work our way up to the ground floor and then the upper two floors. So the way this is designed is that you've got the central bit of the power station and then you've got the turbine rooms which is obviously one over that side and another one over there. You get a better perspective from up above. Have you seen any shops yet that you're interested in Gabby? Well all of them of course. One of the main, main reactors. Yeah. Now whether or not this was in the original spot I'm not sure very romantic spot to have tea. In fact, actually, it's not tea, Gabby. It's um, a champagne bar. Look at these little lights here. You can have a, a champagne cocktail or two. So as you come in the main entrance, you literally just come down the stairs. But the new and the old, I love that kind of architecture myself. I don't think I've ever been into a shopping center this clean. Wow, look at this. So there's still some shops to arrive. This has been open since October. I love their Christmas decorations. And you're not seeing things. There's an actual car up there in that box. Can you see that? I can see it. There's a car up there. We'll get a better view <laughs> on the second level. Or <laughs> I don't think so. Competition. Competition to win this car. That's just crazy. It's a nice car, fully electric. Never heard of that brand before. So I'm not a big fan of shopping centers, but this is really impressive, isn't it? Very. Your eyes don't know where to look. I know, you do feel like your eyes are constantly wandering. You're like, oh wow. Look. <laughs> what? Car door. Yeah, this is a, a shop that sells cars inside a shopping center. And they're car doors, yeah. How much are one of these gonna set you back? 75,000 pounds, that's not bad. Look at the wing mirrors. They're cameras. That is a nice car. It smells like you're in a posh hotel. It smells really nice. If you can't afford one of the cars, you might be able to afford a car door instead. <laughs> <laughs> do you reckon they do that? They say, look, if you can't afford that, I'll tell you what, you can buy one of those and feel like you own one. <laughs> I've noticed there's a lot of pianos in here randomly as well. So this is pretty special, outside in, you're inside, but it feels like you're outside, because obviously this big open space, 
it actually feels a little bit cooler here than it did over there. So Gordon Ramsay has a restaurant in here, which we'll go and check out in a moment. A lot of these shops for me are very posh. Look, there is another car shop. What is it with car shops in here? I don't know, but they have a lot of like jewellery shops as well, like highly expensive ones, like Rolex, for example. Yeah, look at that, look at that man. He's so That's happy right. to welcome you in. How much? Oh, exhibition owner not telling you the prices. He looks very happy to welcome you in to spend thousands of pounds. So look at the back end of the power station here. They have a really um, posh Marks and Spencers out there. And a a really posh one? Well, Aren't the Marks and Spencers all posh for us people that can't afford it? So we're now on the upper ground. I was just saying the music is being pumped in at the moment by little, what are they called? but little bow speakers and Gabby actually uses these to sing. <laughs> Good to know they've got a Starbucks, Pret-a-Manger. So I would say it's probably 90% occupied of shops in here. And even Starbucks has the Battersea Power Station theme running throughout with the fans and all this on the wall. So we're in Turbine Hall A at the moment. I think you get a much better perspective though when you go up to the, the third level it actually smells really nice in here as well. It does. So you can see there's still a few shops that are empty at the minute where the pancakes are. Never heard of that before, but I'm interested in pancakes. So Gordon Ramsay has a restaurant here, Bread Street Kitchen and Bar. I wonder if he was here to open it. This is the menu. How much would you pay for some roasted cod in Gordon Ramsay's restaurant? 28 pounds, wow. Fish and chips, 22 pound, yikes. Being from the coast, that's expensive. So it says they've got a cinema up here, whether that's here yet or I can't see any signs for it. So you've got Turbine Hall A and Turbine Hall B. I think Turbine Hall B, for me, is my favourite. Look at this, from up here. That is amazing. And attention to detail, how it's all been fully restored, look. Is that control room or something? There's even the old clock up there. You can see all the steel girders they've left that are rusting away. And you would probably think health and safety. <laughs> the size of that hanging down. I'm sure they've replaced the wires up there so they're not gonna fall down anytime soon. It's a pretty strong roof though, because it can hold a car. So they're using it for something. And these Christmas lights, they're pretty special. I'd love these in my house or in my garden. Okay, so I want to show you this cafe stroke bar. It's called the control room and some of the original controls from Battersea Power Station are actually in there. Let's go and have a look around. You just walk around here? Yeah, that's it. The rule we have is don't touch anything. Okay. Wow. I don't know if this used to be in the original place or they've moved it, but look at this. You're not allowed to touch anything. I wonder if anyone watching this ever worked at Battersea Power Station and maybe worked controlling all of these, who would have thought that it would now be a restaurant and a bar? It smells really nice in here. They must be pumping some kind of fragrance into the air. Let's just have a walk up to the cinema. I'm not sure if it's open yet. I think it is open. Wow, look at this. Get a massive bird's eye view from up here. What a very understated entrance to a cinema. How many screens have they got? Oh yeah, I was gonna say, how many screens have you got? So we've got two screens here. So this cinema will have a private members club where you can go and have a drink and a, a meal before you go and see a show, before you go and see a film. What a great idea. And if I go this time of day, it's 12 pounds. 
that's not bad no big popcorn machines here all very posh take a bottle of wine in there not many shopping centers have sofas so leaving the power station behind so this whole area on the south side of the power station has been completely transformed into what it was 10 years ago and these buildings look like they're spinning almost interesting view they have though of the power station they are pretty close to it if you think about it looking out the window onto just like a solid brick wall so this is where we are now and uh, the electric boulevard is all down here there's also prospect park which has also been sorted out they've also got the power station park um, which is obviously the main entrance where we came into so we're just behind it now um, it depends which you think is the main entrance I would have said the north entrance is the main entrance but uh, this is the most southernliest entrance to the power station look at those so there is a hotel on this side a lot of building work is still going on but a lot of these places are now filled there's a Zara down there this area is called Electric Boulevard obviously staying in the theme of the power station it's quite a nice area there's no shops on the right hand side just on the left hand side is occupied by Zara but just look at this it's just so different who would have thought this would be a massive area for shopping, eating, restaurants? It's great because this part of London, as many Londoners will know, is not the best area at all. So now, in the shadow of the power station, it looks amazing. So this will continue all the way around here. So you would have thought they would have opened it all together, but they've obviously opened it up in phases. So this part of Electric Avenue is going to continue with even more hotels and apartments. In fact, you can see that building there. That looks amazing. 50 Electric Boulevard. That looks insane. So we just ran the back of the power station and we've just noticed that there looks like there's apartments over this side, even though, oh yes, they are apartments. Yeah. Yeah, because I know it's like there's like a clothesline in a window and you go further across and you've got Someone's randomly Christmas some Christmas lights and then you go further down you've got someone's sofa. I'm, I guess they're trying to make this area look like the old wasteland, how it used to be. But yeah, it's called Switch House, Gabby, that's what it's called. In fact, if you look right at the top, Ooh. little penthouse suites maybe. Now you're it's, talking my language. What's crazy is that they look pretty much all occupied. And I bet you they're not cheap, are they? I, I would really be curious to know how much they cost. To live in a mall. <laughs> yeah, to live in a mall stroke power station. What's really interesting, we didn't see a Boots, we didn't see a Super Drug. We didn't see a New Look, and we didn't see a River Island. Yeah, all the shops in there, well not all of the shops, but a lot of the shops are kind of high-end shops. Like for us personally, we only went into Starbucks. <laughs> but it was great to walk around Things are quite expensive in there, but it's amazing what they've done with Battersea Power Station. It's been talked about for decades, and the fact that it's, I would say, 90% finished. There's not all shops that have been taken up in there. That's right. It would be interesting to know what it's going to be like this time next year. So it's good that we're putting this vlog out now so that we can compare. Yeah. I mean, it's a whole community around it. You can live, you can work, you can shop, you can eat. It's an amazing space. I felt it was lacking that little bit of atmosphere. I think because it was so high end, but it was absolutely immaculate and very prestige. And it smelled really nice in there. You know, like when you, if you've ever walked into a show home, when it smells brand new, that's how nice it smells in there. I hope that they never put any signage on the power station. I don't think they will. I think they'll keep it as it is because it's so understated from the south and the north entrance it still looks like you're walking into an old power station rather than a shopping mall exactly. and i hope they keep it like that do give the video a thumbs up make sure you hit subscribe i'll see you next time